The Short Timers is a novel by Gustav Hasford, a real veteran of the Vietnam War. He proudly served as a war correspondent in the Marine Corps, writing numerous articles on what he saw while he was over there. The Short Timers is his semi-autobiographical novel depicting the war and the hell it raised. He doesn't talk about the political controversies, the hippie protests back home, the confused, downright stupid reasons why the U.S. went over there. None of that matters to him. He wrote about what it was like being a grunt in the trenches. It starts off in boot camp, showing in detail many of the training and brainwashing techniques used by the Corps, and watching one of his fellow recruits slowly go insane at the abuse of a hardcore drill instructor. It then follows him into Vietnam, covering a few small skirmishes, and finally into the infamous Battle of Hue, where he and his squad shoot their way through enemy snipers to finally take an ancient palace. It then goes into Khe San, the famous jungle battle, and depicts him and the other Marines descending into to a world of shit. As I'm sure you've guessed by now, this book formed the basis for Stanley Kubrick's epic masterpiece, Full Metal Jacket. How can you shoot women, children? Easy. You just don't lead them so much. <laughs> This is one of my favorite Kubrick films, probably only second to 2001, and that's because I have a pretentious fascination with that movie. But this is the one I get, the violent one, the dark one, the one that changed the game. I have chewed more people out with lines from this movie than actual drill sergeants have. And yeah, I know, there's supposed to be some kind of hidden theme about Stanley Kubrick shooting Kennedy or some crap, right up with how he faked the moon landings. See, I know what really happened. In actuality, it was the aliens from Roswell who assassinated Kennedy and were at war with the Jewish bankers who faked the moon landings because Hitler had actually escaped to the moon and winters at the center of the Earth and invented steel beams that could be melted by jet fuel. Oh yeah. Anyway, the surface themes of the film deal with the sheer horror and darkness of war and the cold, cruel men that it creates. As the great General Patton put it so simply, War is hell, but as dark and morbid as the film is, the book is infinitely more so. I mentioned hidden themes earlier, and one of them is how the Marines are raping women in Vietnam, and how this is true of all wars and all warriors. Implied, but not shown. This isn't so subtle in the book, which openly discusses the characters doing more than just killing. Listen to this. How can you chase a 14-year-old girl with your dick hanging out? If she's old enough to bleed, she's old enough to be butchered. Which really brings me to the fallacy of Kubrick's hidden messages that only the freakos can pick up on. No one cares. Yeah, I know it's supposed to be subliminal, so maybe we're being fed the information without knowing it. But I submit America's fascination not only with this movie, but with their high militaristic attitude as evidence that this hidden theme failed. Furthermore, for all of Kubrick's artsy genius, no one ever really talks about the second half of the movie. Yeah, you've heard it too, right? Everyone says it goes downhill after the boot camp scenes, which are so amazing that nothing can really compare with them. I disagree. I like the second half, maybe not as much as the first, but I still feel it makes a valid point. You know, on the surface, ooh. It's a haunting, chilling look at savagery and violence, and maybe that's what people don't like about it. It's not glorious action or stylized shooting. It's all too real, and people can't bear to look at it. Of course, so is Apocalypse Now, and people like that movie just fine, so I don't know. It's an old argument. If someone says the meaning of life, but no one listens, what's the point? Or even more classic, if a tree falls in the forest, but no one's around to hear it, does it make a sound? But let's get to the more technical aspects of the story. The film retains many of the points of the story, but switches them around here and there, putting one scene in front of the other, and most notably combining the two climaxes. Yeah, the bit at the end with the sniper girl torturing them takes place over two scenes in the book. As I mentioned, it doesn't end in a way with the Sniper Girl, but rather goes on to the Battle of Khe San, a jungle battle which shows Private Joker begin to take over the squad, becoming even more ruthless than the others around him. Of course, I always thought that this happened to Private Joker. If tomorrow I tell the press that I'd like a gangbanger, we'll get shot. Or a truckload of soldiers will be blowing up. Nobody panics. Because it's all... 
part of the plan. And naturally, they changed the title. The short timers in the book refer to the Marines who are just in one tour of duty and then get out, versus lifers who never get out. Hasford actually wrote a sequel to the novel, The Phantom Blooper, which I haven't read. It was written after the film came out, which Hasford wasn't too keen on. In addition to the fact that I don't like sequels, I couldn't find it anywhere. Hell, I just barely found this book, and that was a hell of a time. Yeah, it's available online, but I just don't like reading books without paper. He intended to write a third novel chronicling the further adventures of Joker, but, but he up and died before he could start it. His last novel was called A Gypsy Good Time, which was a noir detective novel which was panned even by his fans. See, death is one of the weaknesses of the Marines. Navy SEALs wouldn't die. You know Chris Kyle? Kubrick's next movie is going to have a hidden theme of him being alive. When Kubrick first read the book, he described it as a masterpiece. He almost didn't make the movie as he wanted to meet Mr. Hasford, but was advised against it because he's a very scary man. Their meeting did not go well. But, as you can see, he did make it, bringing the story into grisly life. I seconded this notion. The book is a masterpiece, a delve into the shocking savagery of Vietnam that thoroughly deconstructs the heroism of war. There are no heroes in war, only those who kill, and those who kill well.